Hey yo guys, welcome back to my channel. And today on this episode, dude, my show. Oh sorry, I forgot. Yeah. Okay, let's start then. Do then. Subscribe to FYI Art and Learn Architecture with Fun, and hit the bell icon to never miss any update. So hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel FYI Art, and we are back with new episode of Art Saga Dialogue powered by Influx LED lights. So by opening you must have guessed who we have for the show today. So let's go and talk to the face of blessed arc Rishabh Vadwa. Hey Rishabh how are you and should I call you that blessed human or Rishabh? Hey Sagar first of all thank you for inviting me and you can just call me Rishabh. <laughs> okay then Rishabh so we have all seen you on Instagram and YouTube talking about architecture but today let's talk more about you. So starting with our first segment which is creating a creator. So as you know Instagram and YouTube is a tool becoming uh, which is becoming a great deal in architecture. And hence I wanted to have this interview with an content creator also. So let's start the first question how you came up with an idea of creating content for YouTube and Instagram. So uh you know when i so i actually started this channel uh, back in 2014 and that time i was i was also in second year of architecture i uh, did not really want to it wasn't what it is today it wasn't a channel geared towards architecture it was just me having fun on youtube it was random uh, i used to follow a lot of youtubers like lily singh uh, corner franta uh, Joe Sugg so they used to do like fun stuff Lily and Lily was one of the biggest inspiration so she used to do like funny skits and I I used to do that I used to do skits uh on YouTube and so that is what I started off with um and yeah so it's been quite a journey since then is so 2014 when I started I used to just do random things on YouTube and and it sort of slowly evolved into becoming more about architecture I started this page in like uh lockdown 2020 and again oh, as you nice. were talk- as you we were talking the dreams before this interview about the dream this was the again a dream that I have to start a page and uh, saying it's a virtual portfolio and yeah I started with it I started with my youtube uh, tutorial videos of revit and then slowly slowly i came back on instagram like saw that like people are growing saw many posts even i got inspired from your post as well so there were many many channels many many pages where i used to see content pehle pehle to it's like uthao or do the same thing just copy paste yeah, yeah. what people are doing and just uh, paste it on your channel so i yeah. i did that at the start but later i saw that okay you have to create your own content otherwise you'll not grow i deleted all my old content like some funny stuff or something like that not the funny stuff funny stuff started much later and then i started the page that is true i mean everybody i think starts with that with just yeah. trying to imitate uh, and and do it in that particular way and then you slowly figure out your own style as you go along yes yes so uh, one more question to this uh, idea of content creation how you came up with the name i know this is very common question but yeah i have to ask Okay so um so blessed dark as a name so obviously there are two parts to it there's the arc part that comes from architecture architect so the short for it arc the blessed part of it uh so i talk about it in all my interviews the the fa- the thing is uh i have always felt blessed in my life um uh, and um uh, i guess i i i know that in a lot of ways i had opportunities uh right from the school that i went to uh the opportunities that were provided to me in school uh and the theater that i did in school is i think a, a part of who i am today and that is why i do the way uh, do things the way i do today is because i was a theater kid back in school so you know there are so many things that i think it's an acknowledgement of all the blessings that i have in life and that is why the name blessed arc it's just i think even back then uh i don't know if it was as deep a thought back then 
or i just quickly just kept it blessed up but i think at the back of my mind it was about acknowledging the fact that i do feel blessed uh and and just making a name from that and it was just a fun fun thing i did not know this would actually grow into what it is today so at that time i was like i just need to keep a name plus dark yeah but this is like a very very cool name i find it very cool so uh, uh like another question to you is what is what has been inspiration for architecture so uh okay first i'll talk about the inspiration for joining architecture i think uh i had decided back in 10th standard that i wanted to do architecture because at that time you also have to choose 11 to 12 me what you want to take right so i had already i had decided sort of ki i want to do architecture uh obviously that came from a very limited understanding of what the field actually is you think in 10th standard you know it's a it's a mixture of art and science so let's take architecture yeah yeah but you understand much more of it when you're in the field um so i think that is that is where i i took architecture and uh, uh, just hearing about it from from family friends and stuff like that that was my inspiration for taking up architecture in general in life you know what inspires me now today um much more than architecture i would say because i i every day through my content through my page i connect with amazing architects amazing people who are doing amazing work mm-hmm. and obviously all of them are inspirational but my greatest inspirations now lie outside of architecture within the media space because i do believe a huge part of what i do is not just the architecture of it but the media of it of of how i created and that is why a lot of inspirations for me today are are troy sivan uh hasan minaj uh, uh john oliver so the, the kind of things these guys do how they blend in humor with with what they create other than that i also look at creators like johnny harris uh, how they are creating their videos and you know i sort of i when i'm looking at his video like johnny's videos i i sort of not just look at them for their content but i also look at them for the editing style i legit sit frame by frame to break down how he sort of made his video and what is making it so compelling and i think that is where nowadays i derive a lot of my inspiration from just media in general i think i think you have jot down like it like uh, people only see the content but do not see how it is made and i think you have explained it very nicely that you study a lot like from the creators who are there and creating some like uh, good content there and then you are so yeah i mean it 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 is also about the fact that you know uh, when even though it's architectural content what you need to understand and any creator out there if they want to be a creator what they need to understand it it's still about content creation and you can't just see architecture creators out there if you really want to create content that the masses will consume you will have to look at the content that is created for the masses not just because architecture community is a small community people yeah. all over the world in the community sort of know each other it came as a shock to me i think 2 years back when people started knowing bless dark like in london in 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 new york and now i understand it's a much smaller community so now people know each other all over the place but if you want to create content for people in general you need to also understand Uh, how that content is is get towards them and and you need to keep leveling up your game that comes from understanding content creation production in general and not just uh, the the content part of it you are doing very great job for creating content and sharing some information with us with humor thank you so the next question to you is your architectural experience as a student and now as a creator um so um you know when i was a student the thing was uh i i used to keep myself busy and i used to keep doing loads of stuff i think in second third year i had taken part in so many competitions at one time i was just moving around like a zombie because i had no time for anything at all uh so what has dri- what has remained constant is the fact that i still find out the next project the next thing i jump on to that as soon as i find out the crux of what i want to do in that project whether at back then it was architectural today it's content as soon as i know what i want to do and how i want to do it i just jump right in 
and uh, I'm, 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 I'm just get towards them, just doing it. And so back then it was, it was more architectural. It was more buildings. As soon as I knew, because there were times I used to struggle with how I want to create this particular project. And this, especially uh, for my thesis, I think half a semester, I was just struggling because I did not know how there were so many things in my thesis. I did not know how to uh, correlate them together because to me, and this, I said to my thesis guide, he was like, uh, my process is like so much like nobody in my whole teacher panel understood what my process was, why I was doing it. I just remember my thesis guy telling me, why don't you just make some draft plans and we'll go from there. I was like, sir, I don't have a guiding uh, concept behind it. I don't have a guiding theory behind it of how to place things. To me, it is just taking compositions and placing it on the side. I am I an architect or am I an artist? And I literally said it to him and he just looked away at me and he was frustrated. But I think once I found out what I really wanted to do, my actual concept, I think from then on, it was like full speed ahead. So it was for architecture back then. It is for content creation now. As soon as I find it, it's full speed ahead. But I would say this, I think uh, in general content creation, um, I'm just happier doing it of two reasons. One, I don't think, even though it's a lot of work, I still don't think it is as much work. Uh, as architecture, because again, in architecture, you're doing a lot of tasks, uh, creating a lot of drawings that from project to project might be repetitive, but you have to do it, it, it and make changes according to your project. They, they, they're kind of those small tasks that take a lot of time, which are, which to me, I feel like a little, I don't like doing them. Like, like, I like doing newer things. It is like one thing you love and you started to pu start putting efforts in that and you feel it is effortless now. So that happens. I think that happens with you when you create. Yeah, yeah. True. Yeah. Now, so with content, even though there are a lot of things that you have to do, one, there's always newer things that keep coming up in content. So I'm, I'm, I'm really inspired by it. The timelines is much shorter in creating content than it is in architecture because you spend so much time in, in a project in architecture content is much shorter. Uh, the work I would say in a lot of ways, my timeline is still the same of how I worked back then to how I work today. But now I think I'm just more joyful about it. I look forward to it. So it just gets done much faster, much easier. But I think creating the content, I think editing is the like a uh, tough task when there are four people speaking, match the audio, match the video and everything. It's you know, to me. At this point, that is not the, the task I, in my whole process, even though especially in interviews, I find them to be very easy to edit because I'm like, because I don't have to, I just have to edit out the conversation. There's yes. not much for me to do the, the problem, the one stage is research when I'm researching for the project and I'm full flex, I'm reading article after article. I'm reading so much to get, it's just a 10 minute video, but I'm reading for four days no to try, try and get information for that 10 minute video. And then I think while editing, uh, then, uh, obviously editing takes a lot of time, but, uh, it can also be stressful at times, but I don't know in hindsight, it's always, but it's, I think it's fun. The, like, uh, you have to like, keep listening to it, keep uh, finding errors in that. And at the end, like you're satisfied, like what if yeah, yeah. Something I am really, when I keep looking at the, the product that came out and I'm just happy. Yes. And so. I, I like the process in that way that I love the output also that comes out from it. So I think like you shared one thing like about the idea and you get the idea and you move towards it. It's quite the same happens to me that like I have shared some, uh, uh, my views with you, like I get an idea and I go full fledged with it and yes, I have to do it and I go towards it. Same happened with my thesis as well, but, uh, maybe I will tell that story story to you some, uh, someday later. So yeah, moving to our next segment, which is, uh, knowing the process. So the first question is your goal through this page. So when I started, I don't think I had a goal with the page. I think I just wanted to become a famous YouTuber. Uh, that was the goal. But I think then in the middle, it sort of changed. It has been changing. I think as I change, my goal also changes. Um, uh, I, I do. So 
a few years back it was like pretty concrete that i want to create a team and i want to make blessed dark like a full on uh, media thing nowadays when i i revisit that goal i'm not so sure to be honest uh even though it's not like i don't want people and i don't want to employ people and i don't want uh, because i know I, right now i have somebody who creates the did you knows for me and he does it he does a fantastic job uh because he brings in his own uh his own ideas his own prowess to the whole process which is amazing and, and and now i can see how that could benefit me but i also do understand uh what it means to have a company and have people work under you and i i don't know if if that responsibility is something that i want to take on right now or in the near future what i do know is i love creating content and my goal right now is to take my content to another level uh, uh in the sense that i also i want to travel to projects and and document them and uh interview people on site and and create those kind of content as well and and those that is i think the next step that i'm looking at um and i have i have even though there is a long game at the back of my head i don't think about it as much because i know what is important is is the next step you take and that is why uh, even though i have my goals in mind my immediate focus stays on the very next video yes because nothing works if that doesn't work so you just i mainly keep focusing on the next video ahead but the goal in 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 general in life would be first to scale up the content make it much bigger because now i think my pencil also started to see a little bit how uh, this can be a, a a proper thing that i do for like quite a while in my life uh, and uh, you know a big part of that is the finance part of it as well which which has now started working out quite well so uh, i think just having it be more sustainable what i do that is one of the main things and uh once i achieve that i think then i can start expanding start taking the content to another level and and start thinking about how uh this can grow into into much more because now also i can see i do have the power and i'm trying to sort of uh dive deeper into it is is i have the power to connect people from all over the world now uh and it it's so amazing that i i post a story and like 12000 people are are sort of replying to it engaging with it which is amazing which is baffling to me uh and amazing but uh i want to use that and create more collaborative stuff with people together but all of that is in the future the first i think goal is sustainability but the main focus is the very next step that i take i, I was very happy that your first uh, real collab was with me <laughs> yeah I have never done a real collab before that. I have also never done a real collab, so I just text like I was like, uh, will he reply? Will will he do real with me? Of like course. I know, I know, but you don't create a humorous reel like uh, uh, you uh, in rarely only. You create more. Yeah, of- and that is what I was thinking. Maybe I should start creating more. It's much more informative. I saw your story that I also said yes. You should make more. like it was funny and like uh, i it is good like you you should have humorous content on your page yeah i think i'll start making more of it moving on to our next question so what is your process when you in, uh, interview an architect and uh, when you find any post related ideas what is your process uh so uh, i think so it it is different for different types of content when i'm doing the content for instagram the like suppose it's a post right uh, the process very different as much faster it's like done within like an hour i quickly look for newer things that i want to do. if i have something in mind great if i don't i look for something that i want to do i quickly create the post and like put it up like it's just, it's much faster when i'm creating that reel of did you know uh, that obviously takes me a little more while where i i research reels like just before this interview i was just shooting uh, like the did you know for the next week so uh like i do it like in that process i i take out like 6 to 10 maybe 20 facts in a row and i shoot as many as i can and then first i used to do it by myself but now i obviously i have a person so i send it to him and then he edits for the whole week 
so uh, there is that process that goes in when i'm creating like did you knows for interviews i think the longest time just goes in chasing people yes uh, and like figuring out schedules yes i think that is the biggest uh, time taking process that comes in an interview for i think the interviews for me are the easiest because i don't have to do anything yeah i just have my questions and i just ask them and the person just goes on talking and so that is why i think interviews are the easiest pieces of content for me it is the other kinds of videos the informative ones where i have to research and like edit a whole lot that is i think takes a whole different even i am very particular about the music that i choose in my videos interviews have nothing i don't have to choose music i don't have to put on visuals i don't have to do nothing in other videos especially when i'm creating documentaries any piece of documentary especially of late that you pick up like any videos that you pick up i think november december january mm-hmm. uh music you un- you'll see is a huge huge part of that because i spent 4 hours sometimes just to find one track because it i know how important it is and it should so, be copyrighted as well no yeah yeah so that now to uh at first it used to feel very it's a time taking process but now i know resources where i can yes, find yes. music that is free yeah so i only look from that i think if i go for the paid version the process would be much easier and much faster because i'll be able to find better music but at at the moment i just look for free stuff and and that is why it also time taking much more because i have to listen to each and every track till i find the right track yes so that's uh, it it is very stressful at times but i know the 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 value the correct music can add right so uh that process of creating those kind of videos is quite lengthy it takes me quite a while obviously i have to keep keep doing it much faster because it's a video every week mm. so uh doing that much faster but um yeah that, those are sort of the timeline i think the interviews are the easiest uh though so i now, think just you, i think the question like, takes time now how you feel sitting on the other side of the table listen i am okay with uh, like in general also even though i am a quiet person in 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 life i think when i'm talking to people i can be quite talkative and so giving interviews also not big not that <laughs> big <laughs> at all okay. i think i just like talking now <laughs> so yeah moving on to another segment which is advice to fellow creators Uh, does every architect or designer should have an online or a social presence uh okay so for this question i would it's like asking me do uh, does everybody need to have a website uh yeah. it it feels like i mean you can do without it also i'm not saying that it is essential for your survival but i think people find out much more about you because largely the world is now on the internet if you're not on it people won't be able to find you as easily because i understand like in jaipur also when you have to go for an architect you you won't just always just take out a social media post look at the architect and stuff like you would genuinely go you know your family friends got their house you like their house built by that architect so you go to that architect and that is how it works but i think more and more uh uh people are sort of getting inspired from even though i go to that architect i will still take my research with me like these are the kind of things that i want right. uh, or this are the kind of thing that i was i was thinking about when i was thinking about my room or or how i want to uh, my garden to look and we will take out those inspiration things which is all from the internet so at the end of the day i feel like in other parts of the world it has changed much more in india it will change gradually but the fact is having an online presence uh is becoming one of the most biggest things to have in any field irrespective of what profession you are in because the world is on it and if the world is out there uh i think i why does zahadi architect is now collaborating with pubg like pubg but i think one they're getting to do newer stuff they they are they are completely in on doing that but i think then it is also increasing their brand value because pubg is played by millions and millions of people around the world uh if it was not played by millions and millions of people around the world uh, zahadi architects would not collaborate with it 
so having a social media presence because people are on social media i think it's a great uh thing to just be on it and it as, as social and instagram facebook even though facebook to now old people mm. but instagram right now is is like uh you know the place to be especially in social media terms especially in india after tiktok is banned yes but uh, instagram is one of the place to be but i would also say it will not always stay there there'll be new social media platforms and as new platforms come people will jump and you sort of need to jump with it okay. if you want to stay uh what's the word relevant uh because pe- people will only talk about you if they know about you they can't know about you if you don't ever show them a presence you can't always expect that people will come in jaipur millions of people around the world will come in jaipur to look at a house that doesn't happen but you put that house's photo on instagram and people start contacting you because they see the value in what you're creating so i think whether you are an architect whether you're a content creator whether you are in any profession whatsoever social media does provide uh, an edge a benefit for you i would tell everyone like who is seeing the video the followers or the subscriber doesn't matter it only matters what content you create and people will follow if they love the content so this is like very very clear so the last question for you today is in your opinion how to keep looking for motivation ah mm that is a good one but to be honest i don't think i have to keep looking for it now anymore uh as i said it's it's that project right i think that is what keeps me motivated just diving deeper into the next project because that is something i really want to do and that is why i dive deeper in back again but i would i would say one thing though motivation is important but motivation doesn't last uh you can't expect to once be motivated and now you're motivated all your life that doesn't happen what works are are more habits that you create so uh you know especially i even if you're in the social media game i don't always feel inspired or motivated but i do know that i need to keep putting out content consistently not not do it in a way that is detrimental to my health if i really need a break i take a break yes. but the fact is if it's it's going to the gym you you won't get muscles you have to train each and every day you might have motivation one day you might not have another day at the end of the day your motivation doesn't matter your work matters because that is going to that is going to get you results no matter how motivated you are if you don't work on it nothing will come out of that motivation so i think your habits would last much longer and when you are in a motivated phase it be nice to create those habits that that you can start taking forward um but other than that i think it is just my content um uh, that is that is what keeps me motivated so i think for people also uh, in general finding that i think if if you want to look for it now and this has been true for me if you want to look for it there is always something there to motivate you even in the most uh meaningless of tasks <laughs> in an architecture office when you are an intern and you have been given some random thing to do even in and you feel like why am i even doing this uh but i think within that also you can find something that that does motivate you and that that is about your mindset not about what the work you're doing it i was making a tile design for a toilet uh I don't know if anybody would even see that that was a very hidden toilet in their house. Mm-hmm. I don't know if anybody would even see that toilet, but I was very inspired. I I wanted to do it, yeah. so I gave it my all. Uh, so uh, I think it 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 comes from you, um, and it might not always come externally. But when you are motivated, when you really want to find motivation in something, you will find it. Yes. yes. So it is like what they always say that like, do what you love, and I think. uh do by doing that maybe it will help you find motivation and every time when i would talk to my followers i am like ki be punctual to your work and have a schedule have a minimal amount of schedule for your work so then everything will be in place 
even in my college i have not worked at night so i ah. all my five years without doing work at night so i was like wo <laughs> so i was you like you should get like a special award for that so i finished my thesis <laughs> two days ago before the deadline and i was what i finished like when did i finish i'm just trying to think i feel like i'm still doing something on the morning of thesis yeah, yeah same, same here so i was also like uh, editing lumion uh, the i have to make the yeah, yeah. walk i have to ah, baki i know my friends were still like making sheets or making yeah, things yeah. So and last day, yeah, everyone was like oh, that, and I was watching that uh, Batman show, Gotham. And ha ha, that the yeah yeah. <laughs> so that was one. You of just my... prepare, yeah yeah. So uh, like, uh, yeah, timing was like even for this page also. I do some kind of scheduling, but it is very hard to have a practice also and run a page. True, true. I'm doing it at whatever pace I can. so i think i think we are like you answer all the questions very nicely and all the subscri- your subscribers will be very happy to see you and uh, you have like given us many good tips about content creation how to look for motivation some i think video editing tips from this video so i think uh, this was great uh, guys blessed human himself giving some tips regarding content creation and uh, it was uh, like it was good to have a chat with you Hey, same here, man. Um, it was lovely being here talking to you. Uh, I don't norm because I'm normally on the interviewing side and not the interviewee. So, uh, my mostly and that's why when I say it's easier also in that part, uh, it's just asking questions, being on the other side of it. But it's great to have come on this side and and chat with people about my journey. It has been great. Man. I hope you have learned a lot from this video. Please like and subscribe my channel and next week we'll be back with new episode.